Hey guys, it's me, Arlene, Delicious Delights. So I'm probably in the minority here when I say that I don't really love Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. I just don't get it, you guys. So first of all, yeah, I didn't really plan a video again today, <laughs> but I thought I would just speak freely about what I think about this perfume. So, hmm, this was released quite a while ago in the early 2000s. I'm not sure exactly which year. It is probably one of the most popular scents out there for designers, for women. I would say it's probably in the top five best-selling perfumes. Every time I see someone's perfume collection on YouTube, most of the time they own this perfume and absolutely love it. And I think it's great that people love this fragrance and that it works well for them. Me, however, I've been wearing this and testing this for quite a while. And I just don't get it. It just doesn't work for me on my skin. So what does it smell like to me? Well, on my skin, when I first spray it, I get this sour citrusy blast. I believe there's lots of orange notes in here and there's orange blossom. I don't really get the orangey kind of citrus when I wear this. I do get this grapefruit kind of sparkling freshness in the opening, which isn't bad. It smells okay. And along with that, I get this clean, crisp, unique smelling soapiness. So for me, it's like a sour grapefruit plus soap and like an expensive soap. I have to say that I don't think the smell stinks. Not at all. Far from it. It's an okay smell. Um, but I just, in the opening here, I just am not, you know, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> it just, I'm not like head over heels over it. Just like... When people talk about it and I'm like, I get kind of jealous even that they're getting this, you know, this beautiful orangey citrusy blast with, um, you know, some sparkling um, freshness. I don't know, you guys. On me, it just, it doesn't wow me. There's musk in here that I find also is quite sparkling and fresh. Um, there's also patchouli in here. In the base and yeah I, I get all of that and it smells fine <laughs> um, but the weird part of this fragrance is in the dry down like I can tolerate the opening and the mid it smells all right and like to me basically as I said earlier it's just like a soapy sour grapefruit sparkling fresh clean crisp scent with um, some musk and sweetness from vanilla I believe but in the dry down of this fragrance, this weird scent kind of just appears and it's kind of hard to explain, but to me it's almost metallic. Like maybe it's a metallic kind of patchouli. And this is the same reason why I'm not in love with Coromandel because, yeah, I like... I like the fragrance, but there's it's that opening with that strange, um, earthy, damp, sweet patchouli. <laughs> um, and on some people, I know that it smells fantastic. And I know Cora Mandel is like, you know, one of the favorites of the entire line of so many people. And I and and it's like, yeah, I just can't get past this weird like almost like damp basement kind of patchouli. Um, but this doesn't smell like a damp basement. <laughs> it's just this something in the base. Maybe it's a metallic musk plus patchouli or something. I'm not really sure what it is, but whatever is in here, the combination on my skin uh, feels like a crisp, clean, um, metallic scent that does not make me feel luxurious does not make me feel bougie, it doesn't make me feel classy or elegant, and it just doesn't make me feel anything. 
So yeah, it's just, it's just not a perfume for me, you guys. The bottle is beautiful. I like it. You can only see, it's hard to see, but if I put my hand back here, then you can see where it says the Coco Mademoiselle. This has probably ha uh, been re reformulated too. Um, let's see what this is. The number here says, if I can read it correctly, 03001. So yeah, I have been trying so hard to, uh, well, I've been testing this and I've been trying so hard to like understand it and to like maybe understand why people love it so much. And I think it just all comes down to a chemistry. And for me, uh, it's a chemistry problem. <laughs> just like with my previous video with Baccarat Rouge 540, some people get this like hospital feel where it smells like metallic or mineral like or band-aids or I'm not really sure <laughs> uh yeah that's really fortunate because I don't really get that on my skin but I do get this really strange um metallic feeling in here um with this um off-putting kind of patchouli scent that together like patchouli with the soap and everything it's just weird on my skin <laughs> it's unique though I'll give it that it doesn't smell like anything um you know outside of this house like, like I haven't smelled anything compared to it like well obviously this flank the flanker the intense version which I kind of like that one works better for me than this one but other than that I don't outside of this house I don't smell anything like this I do smell something similar in here that I do also in a fragrance from this house that actually does work really well for me, which is the nine, number five low. I am not exactly sure what it is. I haven't actually tested them side by side, but just from memory when I wear this and when I've worn this, I do feel a, a similarity here. Maybe it's that sparkling, fresh, crisp musk or that refreshing, clean crispness. They both have that. Um, but for me, the Chanel Number no. 5 Low really does work for me. It, it does also have that citrusy um, soapiness, but it doesn't have that weird base in it. And I'm, I don't mean weird in a in a bad way though. It just it's just weird in a way that doesn't work on my skin. Uh, this one does work really really well. And yeah, if I were to choose from the two, I would obviously choose this number five low, which I think is great for, um, like out of the shower or if you're looking for an everyday clean office scent, I would go for this. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people would go for this, and it makes them feel. I guess it makes people feel um, hmm, classy and elegant. But unfortunately for me, it doesn't do that. Hmm. Is it mind blowing to me? No, not for me. Uh, is it a masterpiece? I can't say that it is. Um, but yeah, I do. Hmm, I'm trying to think of good things to say. <laughs> um, but I don't think it smells terrible. Not at all. It just smells something like... I'm thinking of like this working, maybe a professional kind of working woman, or man, a man can wear this too, um, who's well-dressed and she always looks her best. Um, I'm for some reason also picturing her wearing like heels or something. This is the kind of imagery that I'm getting with this one, uh, with someone wearing this. It does maybe uh, bring out, well, that's the imagery I'm getting, but uh, on me, I just don't feel very comfortable wearing it. It just doesn't suit my personality, I guess. And there's some other perfumes that are from the House of Chanel that I actually really struggle with as well. <laughs> uh, number five. The original number five, the OG, uh, that one doesn't work on me. And I'll probably do a video on that sometime at some point. Um, yeah, probably the most popular fragrance of all time, Chanel number five. Just does not work. I don't get it. And I guess, 
I guess that's the same with this one. Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. The EDP doesn't work for me either. I have tried the EDT. I have tried the Parfum. And again, they just don't work on me. So <laughs> that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about. What I feel about Coco Mademoiselle. One of the best-selling women's perfumes out there. I would love to hear what you guys think of this fragrance, um, if you think I'm crazy or not. <laughs> also, what do you think of Chanel Number no. 5, or what do you think of this house? I know a lot of you people, I know a lot of you out there are very, very big fans of this house, and then there's some of you out there that just think that the house is just not for them. Maybe even overhyped, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.